All right, well, it's time to get a little familiar with some formulas. Uh, we'll be working with, with some of these a little later in, in some other word problems as we progress through the, the courses and videos that I have for you. Um, three of them that are really, really common are rectangles, triangles, and trapezoids. And so we're going to discover uh, some ideas like area and perimeter, work through some examples. Not that big of a deal. It's kind of nice dealing with formulas, especially in word problems, because it gives you a starting spot. You don't have to create a, a verbal model if you have a formula. That, that's fantastic. So let's talk about rectangles. Oh, firstly, before we, we get to that, uh, is the idea of perimeter versus the idea of area. The idea of perimeter is the idea of baseboard around a room or walking outside of a building and counting up how many steps you take. Perimeter is the distance around a figure. So it can be most of the time it's just a polygon, something with straight sides that's closed. Uh, we can use a different word for circles. It's called circumference, the distance around a circle, kind of like the perimeter of a circle would be circumference. That's opposed to the idea of area. The idea of area is not the distance around, that's perimeter, it's the amount of surface something covers. Now we're talking about planar figures, stuff that would draw on a whiteboard or a piece of paper or something flat. Um, so when we talk about area, we're talking about how much of that whiteboard or piece of paper or, how, or surface your figure covers. It's more of a carpet idea or a, a lawn idea. So when you go into the Home Depot or wherever you go to buy your, your, your products, baseboard is the perimeter idea, how, how much it would take to go around something. It's always in linear units, so it'd be in feet or inches or miles or meters or millimeters. Area is the amount of surface that, that something covers. The carpet idea would be a square feet, square meters, uh, square centimeters. That, that's the difference in the idea. So whenever we're talking perimeter, you're just inches, miles, individual units, not square units. Area is square units. So. When we talk about rectangles, hey, rectangles have four sides. In fact, they have four sides where the two opposite sides are equal and they have 90 degree angles. That's a par as opposed to like a parallelogram where opposite sides are equal but it doesn't have any right angles in it. So rectangle has four right angles and opposite sides are equal. So in other words, if you have a rectangle, you really only need to know two adjacent sides to be able to figure out everything dimensionally about that rectangle. If this is W, so is that one. If this is L, so is that one, which means that for a perimeter, the perimeter would be adding up all the sides. That's really what perimeter means, add up all the sides. So what's the two for? Well, you got two L's, you got two W's. So if you add two of those plus two of those, you've added up all the sides. That's what that means. Um, the length times the width is what's going to give you area. So you can imagine a grid, every unit lengthwise every unit widthwise, and we multiply that to figure out how many squares are in that figure, square units. That's the area equals length times width idea. Something real similar happens with triangles. There's an additional formula we'll talk about. For perimeter, yeah, you just add up all the sides if they're given to you. Most of the time, we just talk about area for triangles. Area is, it looks really similar to this, this length times width, but we cut it in half. That's because of how a triangle is really created. It's really half of a parallelogram, which has the same formula as rectangles for area, cut in half. So we take the base times the height, like a parallelogram, and then we cut in half because every triangle is half of some parallelogram. That's where the formula comes from. Now, the triangles, they have three angles, triangle for, for a reason. Those angles on a flat surface have to add to 180 degrees all the time. Um, it's interesting that if a triangle is drawn on a non-flat surface, that's not true. If it's drawn on a sphere, those angles add to more than 180. If it's drawn on hyperbola, those angles add to less than 180. Kind of cool. But with Euclidean geometry, stuff that's on a plane, we're talking about a, a flat triangle here. Those angles have to add to 180 degrees all the time. And we can use that to our advantage, especially when we get to stuff like trigonometry much later. Uh, last figure for this video is trapezoid. A trapezoid is a truncated or cut off triangle. So the formula is very similar for the area. If you look at the, the area, base times height divided by 2, hey, kind of base times height, base 1 plus base 2, times height divided by 2. We basically just cut off your, your triangle. Or you can think of um, two triangles here, and, and I, can, I can show that to you. So if you took a, a line and cut it right here, on a trapezoid, these two bases are parallel. So if you took and cut your trapezoid, 
right there, you have two triangles. Both those triangles have the same height. So you'd have base 1 times height, same height. Base 1 times height divided by 2. Base 2, well, I said backwards, but base 1 times height divided by 2. Base 2 times height divided by 2. And then you can factor out the 1 half and the height. That's where this comes from. It's the idea of you have two triangles with the same height. And you can make a formula out of it. Uh, perimeter, again, is just add up all the sides if you have to. So we're going to deal with three quick examples, just run through all these formulas just so you have exposure to it. But that's about it. So let's say that you have, um, you get a room. I, I have to carpet a room, and it's about, Three point five meters times two meters. I want to buy baseboard for this room, and I also want to carpet this room. So I'm going to carpet first, and I'm going to put baseboard over the carpet. So it'll look kind of nice. Let's figure out the carpet idea. The carpet idea is an area idea. How much carpet I need in square meters in this case? So our area would be just our length times our width. Because multiplication is commutative, it really doesn't matter what order you do this. What does matter is that you multiply your length times your width in some capacity, uh, figure out how much that is, that's 7, and then use the correct units. If you're finding area, you're multiplying one length times another length, or a length times a width. You're multiplying meters times meters. It's going to give you meters squared, square meters. You can't go to Home Depot and say, hey, I want, uh, I want three feet of carpet. Well, that doesn't make sense. You can say, I want um, square, square feet, or you can say yards, but it's implied that it's square yards. So one, one yard of carpet is, um, is, is a measurement, but it's inferring area there. So when we write this down, we want square units for anything in area. So our carpet, we need seven square meters of carpet. Our perimeter... Don't put 5.5. Don't just add the numbers that you see. You see there's a hidden 2 and a hidden 3.5 here. So we can use our formula. You can also just add this up. If you want to put 3.5 and 2, that's 7 plus 4. That's going to be 11. That's totally fine. Or you can do 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3.5 is 7. Add those together, you get 11. So no matter what we do, we're going to get 11 meters, but not square meters. This is around this object, so it's just it's got to be linear. So it has to be just in our original units, not square units. Okay, let's talk about some triangles. So imagine we have a triangle. And you get a triangle that you're, um, you're going to paint. So you have to paint this for a model plane or, or whatever you're, you're creating. And you want to figure out how many square inches of paint that you need. In this case, we have inches. So because this is basically half a parallelogram, we're going to use a very similar formula, just like that, but we're going to cut it in half because it's half of that parallelogram. So if we want to find our area here, notice how without some advanced mathematics, we can't figure out our, our perimeter. We don't know what these sides are. I'm not asking for that. What I'm asking for is the area. How we figure out the area is take your base. Our base is one of the sides that you're given um, that's adjacent to this 90 degree height, or 90 degree angle that gives you your height. So we would take six inches times our height of three inches. Now, you can either multiply by one half or you can divide by two. It is the same exact thing. It does not matter what you do. So I'm going to show you that. This divide by 2 is multiplying by 1 half. You can move, hey, remember this? You can move your variables to the numerator. Base times height over 2 is 1 half base times height. On your calculator, just 6 times 3 over 2, or in your head, just multiply 6 times 3 first and then divide by 2. You're going to get 18 divided by 2, or 9 square inches. Now you'll notice I wrote it, wrote it different here. You can write inches with the power 2, inches squared or square inches, or you can write out square inches as abbreviated. Either way is fine. Just make sure you have square units. That's important. Now let me change this a, a bit. Let's say we're not talking about area anymore. I give you
that, let's see, this angle is 60 degrees, and this angle is 20 degrees. Can you find the missing angle? Well, if you, and this is not to scale, but let's draw an example here. If you know that the angles add up to 180, you can create a pretty easy formula here. All your angles must add to 180, which means that x plus 60 degrees plus 20 degrees equals 180. Notice how we can just fill out our formula. That's kind of cool about formulas. It takes all the thinking out of it, really. You just have to identify what's going on. If you combine some like terms like we're used to doing, and subtract 80 from both sides, we figure out our missing angle is 100 degrees. So, so far we know perimeter is the outside of an object. We know how to find that for rectangles. We know the area is the surface that a figure covers. So we know how to multiply for rectangles. We know how to multiply and divide by two for triangles. We know now that the, the angles of a triangle have to add to 180. That's kind of cool. Our last one is a trapezoid. Works very similar to triangles, and I explain to you why that is. So let's say that we have a trapezoid. I'm just going to change our, our formula here. Let's say that this is 10 feet for our base 2. We have 6 feet. And for our height, we have 4 feet. Again, it'd be really hard to figure out the, uh, the perimeter here because I haven't given you these two sides. But we can figure out the area. Why don't you try it? See if you can do it. Uh, the base 2 in this case would be 10 feet. Base 1 is 6 feet, and your height is 4 feet. If you've already tried it, if you got that down, let's just fill out our formula. If you noticed from before, you can absolutely write base 1 plus base 2 times height all divided by 2. So where you have that 1 half, it either 1 half times the amount that you get, or the amount that you get divided by 2 will give you the same answer. So we've got a 6. Okay, hey, base 1 is 6. Base 2 is 10. No problem. Got that. Our height is 4. Cool. And then the 1 half. Don't forget your order of operations. Your order of operations say no matter what you do, you got to do parentheses first. So 6 plus 10 gives us 16. After that, you only have multiplication. It doesn't matter how you multiply. You can do 1 half times 16 times 4, or because of commutativity and associativity, you can do 16 times 4 times 1 half. Either way, it doesn't matter. So let's do 1 half times 16 because it will make a smaller number rather than make a bigger number and cutting it in half. So 1 half times 16 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. If you want to do it another way, cool. 16 times 4 is 64 divided by 2, or times 1 half is 32. Either way you go, our area is 32 feet. Now, nah, we, we're, we're finding area, so we still have square feet, or feet squared. So those are three basic formulas that we have, or three basic shapes we have, and some formulas that are relevant. Uh, the big takeaways here are that perimeter goes around a figure, and is always in the units that you're given. Area is the surface that you cover, it's always in the units that you're given, squared, power two, or the SQ. Uh, and then the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees on a flat surface. Use those things and, uh, and get used to using those formulas. We'll, we will see them from time to time. Next time we're going to talk about circles and then some, some more bent shapes where we have a combination of these ideas. So you have to have this down first. And then we'll talk about cylinders and maybe even rectangular prisms. So I'll see you in the next video.